United States carrier planes head in from the Pacific. Navy gunsight cameras show Japanese ships under attack. Our carrier aircraft strike at bases of the enemy's kamikaze suicide plane. Kamikaze weapon is an 11th hour defense against the American Navy ranging Japanese home waters. Battle damaged American carrier planes have some narrow escapes. Japanese suicide plane. Our anti-aircraft fills the sky. Only one out of ten kamikazes penetrates outer Navy defenses. One out of hundreds reaches the core of the fleet, and few of those hit their targets. carrier Saratoga. Under intense fire, a low-flying kamikaze heads through the fleet straight for her. Fire rips through the Saratoga's hull. The Saratoga's crew checks the blade. In two hours, she was fighting again. Navy guns beat off successive attacks. Bunker Hill is attacked by the suicide plane. For 58 consecutive days and nights, this carrier has been in action. Despite terrific anti-aircraft, one Japanese pilot comes hurtling through. Thirty-four planes, fully loaded, were on deck when the enemy crashed and exploded. Smoke rises hundreds of feet as the fire spreads below deck. The cruiser Wilkes-Barre comes alongside. Her hoses spray the carrier's flames. Many survivors were rescued in this dangerous maneuver. Kamikaze attack killed almost 400, wounded nearly 300 aboard the Bunker Hill. Men are picked up from the sea. Put out of action temporarily, the Bunker Hill nevertheless came through under her own power. The Kamikaze plane, with its pilot automatically pledged to death, has not yet sunk a major warship and it will not prevent the utter defeat of Japan. A Kansas 
Texas farm boy comes home. At Kansas City Airport, General Dwight D. Eisenhower meets his mother, 83-year-old Ida Stover Eisenhower, his four brothers, Arthur, Milton, Edgar, and Earl, and other members of the Supreme Commander's family join the welcome as General Eisenhower returns to the small Midwestern town where he spent his childhood. Abilene, Kansas, population 6,000, is ready to receive him. This simple white frame house was General Eisenhower's boyhood home. Now, after tremendous demonstrations in London, Paris, Washington, and New York, the general is hailed by his old friends and neighbors of this typically American small town. Mrs. Eisenhower see a pageant depicting scenes from Abilene's history and from the famous soldier's early life. The covered wagon and log cabin of pioneer days. The country's western expansion brought the railroad to Abilene in 1866. These townsmen played with Eisenhower on the Abilene High School football team. Here is a reenactment of the General's West Point graduation. Abilene, Kansas, home of a great world citizen, joins in salute to General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Kansas City, President Harry S. Truman receives the honorary academic degree of Doctor of Laws from his own alma mater, the University of Kansas City, the first honorary degree the university has ever awarded. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Truman emphasizes the position of the United States in the world of today. I have a tremendous, a tremendous task. One that I dare not look too closely to understand. For the simple reason that it's one that no man can do by himself. I must have the wholehearted <laughs> and unqualified support of the country to win the Japanese war and then to win a peace. And there's one thing we must learn. It's been a most difficult task for us to learn it, and that is that it is absolutely necessary for the greatest republic that the sun has ever shone upon to live with the world as a whole and not by itself. The audience rises in tribute. In Washington, returning from the San Francisco Conference by way of his Midwest home, President Truman comes to present the World Charter to the United States Senate for ratification, a major step toward peace and security.